Well, thank you for coming. Um, we did one yesterday. It was really interesting. We learned about four and a half hours. We yeah. Didn't have time, but um, we, we cleared a lot of topics. <coughs> so we start on the acoustic guitar. A lot of setup, maintenance things on acoustic guitar, pretty similar to electric. There's some some differences, but we will we'll move out to the electric uh, in a bit after we cover this. Um, we start with the neck, this most important part of the guitar to get it right. Um, to start off with, the neck isn't straight on the guitar. The neck has got about two degree angle. When building guitars, this always needs a little bit of playing around with to get the guitar right. <coughs> and to show you that is, we'll show you lots of tools and things as well, and show you things you can do yourself at home. Uh, with, with more household items than buying tools because all the guitar tools are very very expensive so <coughs> you need to use them an awful lot before you get the value mm -hmm. out of it <coughs> this is straight edge this is a standard straight edge this is a machined polished edge um, this is one from Crimson uh, made in this country an awful lot of our tools come from America, from Stumac, uh, but in Crimson they know what they're doing as well. If you're buying tools yourself, be aware of buying tools on the internet because there's a lot of cheap tools around and are just normal, get the job. Because um, this is all about precision. And when we're dealing with guitars in setups, sometimes we go to five hundreds of a little correct. Yeah, so <coughs> not, not, not in finishes, in finishes we go to over a micro, but in setups, usually a tenth of a millis is, is, is good, but sometimes we have to go to five or something. To show you the neck angle, first of all, uh, if I put a straight edge on to the fretboard, I want to hit the top of the bridge there. Yeah? And it, gives you an idea that the neck is just sitting around two degrees over to make that happen. The height of the saddle is about the action, but the fretboard and the bridge, they're one free in line. So this is something you can easily check at home yourself with a ruler yourself. <coughs> then the next thing on the neck, the neck isn't straight. The neck's got a curve in, and that's necessary for the string to miss its thread. If the neck was straight, it'd be rattling on its neck's thread. Another thing you can do at home on your guitar is, and this shows you the jabot in the neck, um, if we run the straight edge over it, we get the sound like a train, yeah? You hear that? So that's the end of the straight edge falling off its scrap here. And when you're at home, you know your own guitar best. Yeah? I'll make it a bit more pronounced now. I'm putting the straight edge down a bit harder. Well, that, that's if that would only, you'd, you'd only get that effect if there's a very slight curve in the neck. Yeah. 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 If it was straight, yeah. it would just be. Yeah, if it's straight, it wouldn't yeah. work. Yeah? So this tick, 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 tick sound is something you can check at home on your own guitar and listen to your own guitar. And that sound will tell you where, where your guitar about sits. If you're happy with your guitar, if that sound changes, gets less or more pronounced, then of course your guitar is on, on the move. <coughs> and, Another way of checking that without any straight edge is putting the string down on the top and down the bottom and now the string forms a straight line and if you tap it you hear that there's that little sound 
This is another thing you can do at home. Listen to that song. If you're happy with how your guitar is set up, recognize that sound. That sound will change if you guitar is not alone. Yeah? And you have to the same. There's always slight discrepancy between the sixth and the first string because of the different tensions in the guitar. When we set up a guitar, if we do a tight setup, we look at on a 14 joint, you have so this guitar, the 14 is joint of the body. If you have a 12 joint, then it's slightly different. But take talking from a 14 joint, we want about 0.10 of a mil on a sharp setup between that string and the top of the fret. Sometimes it's 0.15, yeah. If, if a guitar neck isn't very straight, then sometimes you have to bump it up to 25 or so, 0.25. But 0.10 is a nice number, yeah. Um, if it's an American guitar, American guitars are built slightly different because American guitars are more built around bluegrass, country music, because it requires a bit of higher action, the back is harder, heavy strings. So generally, on um, American guitars, we look on the seventh and the fifth fret. And the same if you have a guitar that joins at the twelfth fret, then we're looking also further up the fretboard to find that maximum dip. Yeah. But on the standard fourteen fret joint guitar, we look at the twelfth fret, and that's where we measure. So if you see our set setup sheets. It says the relief is on the 12th fret. Yeah, and that's where we take the measure. And the also, just, yeah. um, just to add, if you find this trick a little bit fiddly, then you can just put the cat bow on the first fret and then hold the end down, and then the cat bow does some work down the bottom. And you can check that gap um, just visually and keep an eye on that gap. Um, if there's any movement over time, then you can see that pretty, pretty clearly as well as hear it. If it makes a full tone, then obviously the gap's getting much larger. If it doesn't make a tone, then it's getting getting smaller. So it's a good way to keep an eye on whether your neck's moving and, and humidity in different temperatures. Yeah. Okay. The atmosphere change changes or change the guitar as well. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, um, can we ask questions as you Yeah, 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 if you have any questions, it's all about interreacting. Okay, so lovely. Yes. And um, if you have any questions or want to look at something particular, please okay. interact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the, these, this is great opportunities. I mean, sometimes yeah. like this, because most of the time, guitar players are just in a bit of a bit of a fog, really, yeah. with yeah. with what's happening to their instrument, and yeah. Uh, so. Um, yeah, that's why I'm here, really. But the better you know the mechanics, yeah. the more it can help you to create the sound mm. you are after yourself. Mm. Because a setup is not like bringing your car to the garage. A setup is not about the guitar. We, we talk about the guitar and what we think are decent numbers. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's what you're going to do with the guitar and what kind of effect or soundscape mm. you want out of that guitar. Mm. And this all links together. So your setup, we always say, is not about the guitar, it's about you. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and a guitar that is beautifully set up for me might not work for you. Yeah. So see that as an individual thing yeah so we talk about basics and numbers what we see as 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 good but it doesn't mean it's no. gonna work for you that's what why you get 
the grid set up a whole sheet of numbers and then you you can see if you if it doesn't work for you then we can just talk about numbers and move numbers about till we've got a situation that works for you my my rule of thumb is um it's what james similar to what james taylor's set up is uh, which is he he his quote is on the buzzy side of clean yeah, on a yeah. clean sound, which I really like, you know, so if you're just going to really whack the, particularly the bass strings, for an effect, you just, you have got a bit of a buzz off the bass. Yeah. That, I mean, that's personally how I like it. Yeah. They're just on these straight six strings. But that buzz is kind of part of the soundscape you create, mm -hmm. that buzz belongs to. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, those yeah. things are very important. Yeah. It's actually not a bad time to touch on humidity as well, actually. So the, the neck is basically your counter tension to the strings. So the strings create tension down the body and because the neck's at a slight angle and it's raised here, it's pulling the headstock forward. So that's why we have the truss rod in the guitars to counter that pull from the strings. And it's all a, a fine balancing act. However, if you start getting a lot of moisture, a lot of humidity, the body can, can swell, that's what we call having a belly, you know, you, you can form a belly in the guitar, which will then raise your saddle and put more tension on the neck, because this angle is overall getting steeper, which creates a higher tension. So it means either to relax the body and try and get some of the moisture out to re-flatten it, or put more tension on the truss rod to bring that neck backwards and change the overall angle and tension on the instrument. So the more the more moisture that's going into the wood, yeah. it's going to result in a higher action. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. So the optimal humidity is between 45 and 55%. Mm. Um, we try and keep this place at just a nominal 50% mm. humidity. But temperature, heat, cold, any extremes do affect that. Mm. So Generally, when I say, when we talk about humidity, high humidities are less disastrous than it getting too dry. Yeah. Mm. If the instrument really dries up, then it gets a stale sound. And especially if it's a solid wood acoustic guitar, you're prone to it splitting or, you know, the sides coming away or loads of different kind of constructional faults. Uh, one, one thing that I found is that I've, I've been recently using, I've been um investigating humidity effects of humidity on guitars i mean i have a lot of guitars and um so I, i've been trying i've been using that um sound hole humidifier yeah. the kaiser one because yeah. i thought well that's quite good because that's actually got water in there yeah. in the sponge yeah. and I, I put that on a 12 string and um it had a bit of a negative effect so it it, it raised the action more than what i wanted so the complicated thing about humidity for me is is getting that balance right but what i found is um if it raises the action too much especially on the 12 string guitar then yeah. it doesn't necessarily want to come down again yeah. and 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 that's that's worrying really yeah. because sometimes you haven't got enough saddle then yeah. to mess around with that's why it's so such a sort those, of complicated area. Those humidifiers, the only problem with them is that they're hard to really kind of maintain the right level. Yeah. And generally you can very easily over humidify yeah, with them. I think that, that exactly what happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. So there's another type of them. Taylor sell them, Daddario sell them, but the manufacturer is a company called Bovida, B-O-V-E-D-A. And they're like a, a gel sachet and you put those between like in the, it's got like a little fabric pouch you put those in the sound yeah hole. i've heard of those and yeah they they maintain 50 percent. Yeah, and those are the ones that you recommend are they yeah. they either take the moisture out or add the moisture oh. in and then they're the gel packs that maintain 50 percent humidity right so that's a far more if you don't have any way of tracking humidity like a little humidifier gauge or, um, you know, like a, a digital one that syncs to mm. the phone and tells you the humidity, then 
they're the ones that I'd recommend. Right, that's interesting. They're a bit more expensive, but they last a, an awful long time, mm. and um, they, they maintain that 50 percent, which is kind of where you want to mm. be, really. really. Mm -hmm. Be aware with warm weather, because when we had that really warm weather earlier in the year, we had a real battle in the shop to keep the humidity down. And the standard humidity was at the time about 73%. And 73% really fresh at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why I, exactly why I started playing around with humidifiers yeah. because of that, because I was worried yeah. about the effects yeah. of the, the dry, really, it was really warm, wasn't it, yeah. at one stage. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But the heat doesn't dry down, brings the extra mm -hmm. moisture. Is, um, is it less of an issue for solid body electrics? Is it just, does it, or does it, are they also it's affected? A, it's a lot less of an issue with electric guitars. Okay. Um, and especially with lacquer ones. Especially with lacquer ones. Yeah. Okay. So the lacquer generally seals the wood. Yeah. Okay. And what a lot of luthiers are more, um, so you don't really see it on mass produced guitars at all, but small luthier build instruments, what they tend to do is shellac the inside. So it's got a, a either a lacquer or a finish on both the inside and the outside on their acoustic guitars. So it keeps them a lot more protected. maintainable mm. and protected. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I didn't realize they did that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was all it's sort of neat, neat wood on the inside. Yeah. No, it doesn't pay off. What about Martin? Do they? Yeah. What do Martin do? Yeah. They don't finish the inside. Right. No. Mm. Yeah. Maybe on their presentation models, like the five figure ones, um, it's not something that I've really delved in on their mm. really high end ones. It's a lot of work, yeah. Mm. Yeah. and nobody pays for it. So that's why Jeremy doesn't get on. Yeah. I've seen a lot of um, guitars come up recently, I've never tried one, but like carbon fiber bodied guitars, and they're, they're quite high end price in that. So I, you know, I would think, like, no way. Um, I haven't looked at any reviews and stuff, but they they were like quite expensive and stuff. And I was thinking, and people yeah. were saying that the tones are really nice from them, and, and obviously for humidity that will not be as like no. a problem as yeah. well. But I'm like, that's kind of sacrilege. <laughs> it's like carbon fiber acoustic guitar. It's, it's a big yeah. thing nowadays. Mm. Um, so you get the company in Ireland called Emerald Guitars, an American company called River Song or Kloss. Kloss, that's one yeah. I've heard of. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's, there's quite a few manufacturers of carbon fibre guitars. Have you tried any? Yeah, we've had several in the shop. Generally, they get bought by people who own boats. Right, because okay. Because yeah. boats are high humidity environments and yeah. they're mm. just stable as a rock. They yeah. don't move. Yeah. yeah, you can take it to the doing the, <laughs> the composite back. Yeah, yeah. we've sure. done that for years. Yeah. Um, the problem with gluing a wood to a composite is they never really bind yeah. very well. Mm. <laughs> so the tops can. Uh, that's exactly what's happening. That, I mean, I like that Martin X series actually, yeah. because um, I was playing one last night, you know, and uh, playing it out, and um, they're just great pub guitars, you know, because you don't, yeah. they're not, it's not the end of the world if, the, if something goes wrong. But um, they, I have had trouble with the top coming away and I, I didn't realize what was happening at all I knew that it was just losing its tuning all the time yeah. so I bought a new set of really good expensive tuners thinking yeah. that would solve the problem it didn't yeah. and then I realized that the top was coming away mm. yeah. they're really hard to fit back on again yeah, yeah. to get the right adhesion and the right surface especially yeah. with the, the HBL Martin yeah. Yeah. See, I, I think they're quite good, actually. I mean, they're for what they are, they're, they're, you know, yeah. as I say, you take them out and it's not, you're not too worried about them. Yeah. They're going to be five or six hundred quid. The HBL series. <coughs> Just stretch color. And we get a lot of them into the workshop. Mm. And they're really hard to bond back on. Yes. Yeah. 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 And after you personally not keen on them. No. Because of that reason. No. Yeah. But then, if you want to hear rubbish stories about guitars, speak to me. Because <laughs> <laughs> we see the problems all the time. Nobody comes in here saying, oh, look at this beautiful guitar. People always come in, oh, it's gone wrong with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one more time, quickly back to 
if you get a belly development, you always got a slight belly here. You have so don't worry about that. <coughs> and you can measure it as well. Because of the tension of the strings, that's normal. And some guitars are made like that. Yeah. So again, you can get a ruler or a straight edge. This is very heavy, so I'm gonna be careful here. But put it just behind the bridge and then you can see uh, yeah. yeah, you measure that gap and then half half it. So we've got yeah. this end down here, all the way down, and then you measure that and half it, and then that gives you your centre point belly. Yeah. And you um, can keep an eye on that, even with a normal home household ruler. Um, we call that deflection. Yeah. Yeah. If you get too much of that, that's a bad thing, and it's really hard to get out. We do get them out by putting the guitar in the jig, <coughs> controlling the humidity, so we drive the guitar out inside, and over time we slowly bring up the pressure in the jig, mm -hmm. and I leave it sitting there for a couple of weeks or so, and then usually when they come out of the jig, they're pretty straight again. So if you don't have a jig or a clamp, the, the, don't do that yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how, how does the jig work then? I've, I've heard of people getting the belly out just simply by drying it out. Mm. You know, Oops. over a matter of weeks, slowly drying it yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, so generally it's if so you're at home yeah. and you've got more than one guitar and one's got a big belly, take the strings off it, leave it in its case, yeah. dry it out and leave it for as long as you physically yeah. can and um, hopefully it will bring that back mm. down. But a jig is just basically like a big clamp that goes around the body of the guitar, which puts puts pressure oh, in the there yeah. and kind of helps it along yeah. the way. Right. But it's a slow it, process of just yeah. dialing it. It's pressure. got several pads, so you can move the pads to see exactly where right. you want to apply. So it. it's kind of like persuading it to do what it doesn't want to do. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. That, that's what I was worried about with my story about the 12 string and over yeah. humidifying it. Yeah. You know, because I thought this. It's gone the wrong way for me. It's, it's, it, it's, uh, I mean, it, I was able to take more stuff off the saddle, so it wasn't the end of the world. Yeah. But it's, it is a problem when there's not much saddle left. Yeah. Then you've yeah. got a neck reset issue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't realize that a, a jig would, would uh, do that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a very careful, slow process. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So a kilo weight. Wrapped in a cloth and set on it and just put it away somewhere. <laughs> and fingers crossed. It's not a permanent fix, but it gets you along the right lines. Yeah. And then if you can lower the overall tension that that tops under, then it shouldn't raise up so quickly anymore. Yeah. But kind of, once you've stressed the wood and it's really bellied, it's really hard to get that away permanently without yeah. getting a lot yeah. of bracing in. It's a bit like um, a piece of furniture, you know, <laughs> if a piece of furniture expands yeah. or contracts, it, it quite often it just stays there like that, you've got a crack, yeah. you know, yeah. and all you can do with it after that is either plane it off or fill it really, yeah. you know, you, or it, particularly if it's marketry yeah. involved, you know, you've really got a problem. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to hear that, that, that yeah. you know, you can yeah. do, you, you know, that's so like the back door. In the winter, it's sticky, and in the summer, yeah. you've <laughs> got a big gap. Right. <laughs> um, if we come back to the neck, so I've shown you this, this level. You can pass it around, it's quite heavy. Right? So that's especially made for this job. <clears throat> so that's super precise. I'm just checking it straight, that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's the other side of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if you if you were to spend money on tools like this, either buy Stumac or buy Crimson. Don't buy stuff on eBay. Yeah, because this requires a high level of precision. This is stone ground. Uh, yeah. So yeah, they they machine them and then they've got a granite slab. Uh, which is perfectly level, and they, they hand finish them on the ground slab. Yeah. 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 So crimson guitars are in um, Derby, so just not not too far away, and they're making more and more high quality guitar tools, and they're they're less expensive than Schumacher, and you don't get any more duties in it. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
So if we don't go back to the net, so we were talking about the fret line. Yes. <clears throat> the fret line might not be exactly even with the board line. So that's why we have a straight edge with notches in. And that sits over the frets. Yeah. So now we can use feeler cages, lovely Victorian invention, yeah. very precise. Everybody with a little bit of age on the clock will have a car with feeler cages. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can, those blades are all ground exactly to exact measures. And then you can feel underneath the cage. 0.3. Yeah. On how level the board is itself, yeah. And then you can set them up onto the fret and then you can check the fret line itself. You have to keep this absolutely straight up. So sometimes the necks need to be completely relaxed, so the thresholds need to be completely slackened off when you're dressing the board. Yeah, because the board wants to be perfectly straight. On cheaper guitars, what often happens is the press get knocked in, then it gets leveled down, so the fret line might be higher <coughs> than the board line. But if you have a precise instrument or precise player, they will pick up on that. Also, lots of um, factories are kind of, in a way, taking shortcuts. So the fret line and your fingerboard line is your, your playing area. It's the most important thing on any guitar, whether it be electric, acoustic, any, any stringed instrument. Um, it's what creates the tension, what creates the tone, because of the neck break angle. And a lot of companies, uh, Martin and Taylor, it was actually a Taylor invention, and a lot of the big output factories, because um, Taylor and Martin both make about 700 guitars a day from some of the larger factories. It's, it's high numbers, yeah, very high numbers. They tap the frets in, so they, they slot the boards and tap the frets in just on one side the whole way. And then there's just a under big, an angle like that. Too. Just under an angle. And there's a big hydraulic press, so they push a button and a hydraulic press comes down and presses all the frets in one go. However, if that guitar wasn't properly QC'd and that neck wasn't properly level, then you're pushing in frets level to a board that's not level. So by checking that measure with the notch ruler, you can see how well your fretboard line matches your fret line, mm. and it just kind of puts in perspective how easy a setup would be. For instance, if your fret line was completely straight, there was no relief there, but there was a relief in the neck, then putting tension on that truss rod will create a hump in the middle of the neck, and then you'll get buzzing. So you want those numbers to be as close to each other, mm. if not exactly um, kind of comparable with each other. And it doesn't often happen, especially mm. on mass produced instruments. And would that change when this, the, the tension is on the strings, or would it it'll always be exactly the same because they're always in relation to each other? So, um, they should always be exactly the same. Mm. Um, putting tension on the neck with the, with the strings will obviously create more of a relief than if you had a fully relaxed neck without the strings on. Generally, if you relax the neck, you might end up with what's called a bit of rock. So again, the neck will hump because it's got no tension on. So whenever we do those measures, we always do it with string tension on. I was say, because if, if you're doing a fret dress and everything with, with it, the strings completely off, um, it's like getting that perfect for when the strings are back on again. Like, yeah. I suppose you'd only know when the strings are back on. The so thing. you take the strings off, you relax the neck, and then with that notch rule again, because you're doing a fret dress, you forget about the fret line. Mm. And then you just measure the board itself. Right. And you want to set that board completely flat, or as flat as it can actually be. So then you put that notch rule over the fingerboard, and then you're looking for any bits of gap down the whole neck. 
and you just play around with the truss rod until so you it's get completely it, straight, right? Completely straight, mm. and then you do your flat dress level polish. Mm. Generally, when you put string tension back on, it's just a tiny turn on the truss rod to get a bit of tension on it, and then you should be pretty much perfect. Mm. Yeah. If there are problems, like that, and you want to work under tension, this I remember having got to lot about it, but. This unit, we can lock a guitar into it and actually put it back on the tension mm. and then mess it with the micrometer where it sits. And then you can take the strings off and still have the same tension. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Is that, Walter, is that a homemade jig there, that the thing you've got? Yeah. It's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> I want one of those. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. It's a beast. Yeah, I made this myself many, many years ago. I've seen thousands of guitars. Yeah. <coughs> um, this, every part is movable. You can cram the guitar completely in, but it's a big jumbo acoustic or a, an electric guitar. It's got loads of little bits that move and can uh, set in different angles, different bits. Did you knit the little caps as well? <laughs> Those, yeah. My wife did that. <laughs> no, the, no, because this is all chamois leather over rubber. And over the years that wore through. And um, these were little caps that came off. Like uh, Innocence movie bottles. You know, yeah. One year. Two, and, uh, and so. Promotion, and we just thought, yeah. <laughs> yeah perfect. <laughs> And so, this, yeah, we've got loads of attachments yeah. just like this. Yeah, I was wondering if you could get a mandolin on it, but I've just looked yeah. at that swivel thing and you probably can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This, this. So that, those fit in there and then you can clamp. Uh, these can go up and down. We've got loads of different attachments for it. Lots so, of jigs. Lots of jigs. Yeah. Um, you can basically clamp any instrument in. I, I think it's a really good idea. Not, not just that design, but if I'm changing strings or anything, I, I, I've got a jig, nothing like as complex as that, but it, yeah. it, having something really, you know, secure for the guitar to sit on while you're working on it is, mm. you can't yeah. sort of overestimate that importance, can you? Well, we've been over the years, nearly all over the planet, looking at small manufacturers, big factories, and nobody, they're all have a guitar lying on a mat on a table yeah, a no. on and then some, sometimes yeah. you see there's a, a guitar on a bloke on YouTube what's it? I think it's called I don't know he buys lots of guitars and sells them but he just he's got a little um, he, he, he puts it flat on it's on a kind yeah. of flat so and it's just this slightly sort of wobbly yeah. cradle that the yeah. neck sits yeah. on and I just I don't like that at all yeah. Yeah. no I can rock this guitar completely in Say I want to put a unit in the side, electric yeah. preamp. This whole unit falls sideways. Oh wow. So I can work on it like that, rather than messing about mm. in a unnatural situation. <coughs> if you do lacquer repairs, you want to have it absolutely horizontal. You, you can move Those everything can on this. Fit yeah. in there, which clamps the, the back of the body down. Um, this it's fully articulating. Um, That's articulating. There's a lot of sliding units here. Yeah. This <laughs> jig can help with, um, with shredding yeah, or support um, the, supporting the heel. The, the heel. So, yeah, it's, it's articulating in every single yeah. way. You can clamp the guitar in any, any way you, you'd like. For so it gives you a lot of confidence when you're working on the guitar, knowing that it's secure, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've got tabletop versions of these as well in our workshop. Oh, nice! So yeah. they're they're less pretty, they're more functional, um, and just just a tabletop version. So things like fretting, you'd be cutting the fret edges off, and they're the, the worst possible things ever because they're tiny little bits of sharp metal that you can overlook quite easily. And if you've just got a guitar on a mat on your bench, yeah, you know that will put a massive scratch down the back or you know mm. damage it. Yeah. We can never ever have that before yeah. because of these 
Yeah. Especially if, if it's someone else's guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I won't use the way on the guy. And um, some of you might know I'm a farmer as well. Yeah. With a farmer family. Still still farming. And Tommy used it as a cattle crush as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this whole thing, um, if you look down the side, you see there's an input for an air compressor. Air compressor. Uh, electric power, it's got uh, a hydraulic ram inside. This came from one of my old tractors. So, what can I say? No, you might have done it back in there. But, um, yeah, inside is a, it's a little regulator. So, I can, if I want the guitar on the side, this, this is your third act working height. So, I can just Open and close the regulator and close up and down to accept. Right, mm -hmm. right. So yeah. it is basically like a dentist chair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dentist chair for the tires. <laughs> uh, dentist is something <coughs> I'm always keen on the tool section in the dentist. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff will work for us. Yeah. <laughs> um, if we go back to the frets, all the guitars can sometimes keep. Uh, an effect we call popping, and that's when frets start popping out. Uh, or fret bursts, where frets wear up unevenly. To check the fret line, we've got this little tool. It's called a rocker or fret rocker. You can, if you ever buy one of those, really handy little tool, but don't go cheap. Yeah. They are absolutely rubbish. If you buy that, see that on eBay or Cupid. <laughs> Don't bother with it. Then it's something that's just stand out of weight. <clears throat> this is all precision machine. And if you see the shape, the shape is because we've got exact different lengths. Yeah? Because the threads are getting closer and closer together. So the thread rocker works as follows. You put it over three frets and you try if you can feel a rock. If this rocks, then that middle fret is too high. And then you're moving down the fretboard. As the frets get closer, you get a shorter distance on the fret rocker. Yeah? And that is, you go over the whole fretboard and then you know if your fret line is, is correct. If you have some fret buzz, feel free to bring your guitars in and we can bring down the rock and you can check yeah. them yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a Again. Okay. Is that another crimson one? That's, That's another crimson, crimson one. one. Yeah. 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 So we use the Stumac ones for the years, but actually the crimson one is thicker, it's got nicer edges to yeah. it, and um, it's actually less expensive again. Mm. Um, so yeah, we have retired our Stumac fret rocker. Mm -hmm. See, I, I, I sold a um, lovely Lower Bay ON I had um, 20 years ago or so, but it was when, uh, no, I think it was Griffin Guitars in Plymouth. Right. And um, I bought an, it was a brand new Lower Bay, it was absolutely gorgeous, the most amazing bare core, you know, ridiculous bare core spruce on yeah. the top. Um, but the, the guy in there, the guitar tech, he couldn't get there was a buzz around the top end around about the sort of 12th yeah. ninth or 12th fret and he, he he couldn't get rid of the buzz of it. he just said i'm well in fact what he said at the end well you wouldn't be playing much up there anyway which is you know shocking thing to say to a customer it cost yeah, a couple of grand you know for a, guitar. A guitar yeah and um yeah. and i was so frustrated by this yeah. buzz I, I sold it in the end but it's only really years later I realised that in the hands of a good guitar tech they could do something about that. So yeah. Very, very common thing on acoustic guitars is um, kind of the fingerboard that attaches to the top. If the top warps in any way or if it just has a bit of age on the quad, you can get a, a little bow at the mm. top of the, the fingerboard and this will create buzzing kind of all the way up from temp to onwards really. Uh, sometimes you can get a dip, but then it puts a hump lower mm. down. And what's quite common 
I mean, if it's really bad, it's a needle and fall and refret, and then you re-level the board and refret the instrument. But you can yeah. also just taper off the end of the frets. Yeah, so, so if you don't have a fret array, then this area is not very playable anyhow. No. So you can taper those frets off yeah. and lower, make them lower than the rest, and then avoiding that problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ryan's got one classical guitar, beautiful classical guitar, mm -hmm. useful studio work mainly. And to avoid any problems, we took those frets out. Mm -hmm. Just a bit barbaric, yeah. and just ripped them out. Yeah, <laughs> because they don't do anything anyhow. So if you want to get right of that neck, you can keep the frets to exactly to where you can get to, and then don't bother with the rest of it. Yeah. It was a 20 fret neck, but it was joined on the 12th. So I kept everything from 15th, but then 15 onwards I just took out. Mm. So it's, it, there's parts of the fretboard without, without frets. frets and, yeah. 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 I have seen that before, actually. Yeah. yeah. You know, the guitarists have custom made yeah. things. It's relatively easy to do, and you can fill them nicely with wood after. Yeah. So it yeah. Look yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. 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 So Ryan's guitar is filled in with little bits of metal. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you know, it still, still looks okay. Yeah. yeah. Still, the looks are sort of absolutely fine. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's about the fret line. The neckline, um, and of course the setting of the truss rod yeah. to control that that angle. The truss rod is something you know with those little tips and tricks you can easily do at home. Yeah. Um, fret work you need specialist tools yes. for, so it's something that you can keep a good eye on. But really, that's that's something for. for a can I just ask something? Sorry to yeah, be a nuisance, yeah, but. Um, when um, uh, when some when when um, the uh, truss rod is being adjusted, obviously there's tolerances, isn't there? Yeah. Um, from loose, completely loose, to really tight, and you think, well, it doesn't really want to go any further. Um, is there? Have you known any any to 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 actually break at all? Yeah. Is that? Is yeah. that a you know? Is that a kind of thing that we have to be mindful? Um, of? Well, to start off, we don't want to break the truss rod. No. Breaking the truss rod is not an overcomable issue. Yeah, but there's not many people who can deal with it. Our truss rod retrieval tool kit sets you back fifteen hundred. So. There's not many people who go to the expense to actually do that. <clears throat> if the truss rod breaks, it is two things. Either if it's a truss rod with a uh, counterbar, it's one of the lips breaks off, which we can weld back on again, if we can get the truss rod out. <clears throat> and so most truss rods you can get out without taking the board off. Oh. Yeah, and in but most cases, the bit of fret snaps off just below the nut. Mm. If that happens, then we've got a special router that goes around the threshold and that carves deeper into the neck pocket <coughs> and. Then we cut a new thread onto the leftover bit threshold and set a nut back on to that. And then the threshold shortens in a little bit, but it will still do the full, full job. Most thresholds aren't the whole length of the neck anyway. Yeah. Can, can you put, uh, I mean, I've got, a, I've got an old resonator without, yeah. a, without a truss rod at all. I have had problems with that guitar. Yeah. It's been properly repaired once by Andy Manson years yeah. ago, but it's still not really stable. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring it in. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, you know, I I would I I did in an ideal world I'd quite like to have a yeah. trust rod in in that. So you know, it would yeah. make me feel better. Yeah. 
Is it possible to do yeah. that? Yeah, it's possible, but it's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. it's just it's work. removing the board. Yeah, rather than the yeah. Up, putting new board on and refreshing it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so the other thing you can do is scum tailing it, so routing through the back of the net. Oh, yeah. <coughs> put an insert in that. Yes. Yeah. Or put a carbon fiber strip in, and the carbon fiber is very very strong. Would that be adjustable? Though? No, that's not adjustable. But it's more and more done instead of a threshold, carbon fiber strips. Yeah. But we actually stopped them here. So we've got the carbon fiber. They're just square rods. So you round out the slot yeah. and glue them on the down So See, I think that when I had my, I mean, I made the mistake of leaving the guitar in the boot of the car yeah. on a hot day. Yeah. And this was a nineteen forties national. Well, it was a it was a, a, a stylo national, you know, and um, uh, uh, and without a trust rod, and um, yeah, I had problems with that. But he he planed the uh, Hugh Manson planed the uh, uh, top of the fretboard out, yeah. you know. But yeah. having gone that far, I yeah. probably would have liked to have had a just what we yeah. inserted it having gone that far to do it because it wasn't a wasn't a cheap repair luckily yeah. i had it done on the insurance actually yeah. Yeah. so i wasn't be too worried about the price but um yeah but it's a lot of work because mm. if you plane the board down you you have to remove all your frets to start yeah. off with then your fret slots need to be cut deeper because you lose all the depth and if you're if you've got a lot of um, uh, markers, intricate markers, sometimes they're really thin. And if you go through them, then you have to mm. remake all that. So, mm. um, yeah, it can be very costly. Yeah. Some ways it can be better to steam the board off. Yeah. But that depends also on markers. If you have just little round markers, like those, they're really easy to pull out and replace. <coughs> if you do that, then you can drill little holes in there and steam through those holes. Mm. And then it's a lot easier to take the board off. You take the board off, address that problem mm. onto the neck level, and then put the board down. Mm. But n none of those jobs are simple. No, no. And they all cost a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. And time consuming. So don't do that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I learned my lesson. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, especially, I think, with older instruments, you've just got to treat them so yeah. carefully. Yeah. 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 All the instruments, solid wood, mm. all very fragile mm. little pieces. Well, so we're on truss rods. Yeah. Um, we have these amazing tools, which if you, there's like small differences between metric and imperial. So if you've got an American guitar and you use a metric Allen key, uh, you feel like it kind of works, but then you start getting bite and then it, you know, defreds or kind of can mess up the head of the Allen key. So we have invested in these Allen keys, pass this round. Look, have look a, at the tip carefully. They have a slight taper to them. Mm. So they go from the right size to oversized, which means we could even fit those in a mm. pretty worn out, worn yeah. out nut yeah. Yeah. and still make adjustments yeah. or in the worst case, take that nut out and replace it for a new one. But those are very specialist. It's very slight, but it makes a huge amount of difference. I have had limited success, not on guitars, but with, with worn Allen keys, using yeah. a Torx key instead, yeah. yes. and that's just enough to bite. Yeah, and then you can replace But it. the best thing is use the right one in the first place. <laughs> yeah, but if you have wear on your axe inside, get a new new nut. We stock them, you know. Mm -hmm. They have a whole range of new nuts to fit on the end. Of the so you can get longer. You can get longer. Um, well, we've got a whole set. Yeah, we've got yeah. a whole oh, set. Yeah. 
We've, right. we've got about 20 of these. Yeah. Um, they cost an awful lot of money. They're like £60 each. But, this, uh, this is one yeah. to overstep the grazing side. Yeah. So if your threshold sits here, you can't see it because there's a yeah. grazing. Mm. So this one is designed to overstep that grazing. And it's the same with the nut adjuster ones as yeah. well. They have a slight taper, um, but they end up getting tighter ah. on the inside, yeah. so the taper goes the other way. Yeah. And often the thresholds are situated here, so this is a perfect tool because you overshoot mm. your headstock, so you can make very small, precise adjustments like that, yeah. without anything being in the way. So at you home, do you not use a torque driver to, to make sure you're not. Uh, we have got a torque driver, but it's all about the meshes that happen yeah. here. Yeah, and the torque driver we use more for multiple screwing and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. so that all the screws are set to, to the right door, but rather than this, because this is a balancing act. With the truss rod, you're measuring the relief in the neck, yeah. and it's amazing how much pressure a truss rod can actually handle. So, yeah, I, I was thinking more in terms of knowing when the truss rod is going to get to the end of its. Yeah. Like, Listen, gonna, you, don't, most truss rods break the thing off. come to the end, not because there's they can't handle the tension in the organ. But because they run out of thread, mm. and you're pushing against what? that piece of that there's no thread anymore. Right, yeah? that, that's why I was thinking of, you know, the yeah. torque driver would tell you that you, you're really going beyond the veil on this. Yeah. I think once you've got one guy holding the guitar down and the other guy just <laughs> in the truss <laughs> rod, I think that's about okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> have, have, you, have you had a, 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 a breakage of? Yeah, we yeah, yeah. we've got all the tools to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's common repair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, or common. We bought the yeah. tools for it a couple of years ago, and ever since we bought the tools, we, we just keep on seeing people come in with with completely shot brush rods. Wow. So we need to re put a new nut on and, mm. and recut them. But for years before, but, yeah, it was kind of. <laughs> you bought it at the right time then. But if you run out of fret on your threshold, yeah, mm -hmm. what you do, you take the nut all the way off, yeah, <clears throat> and you need to come here for this particular part, and you put a washer on, yeah, so the nut moves up a little. Yeah. There's one problem with the washer. This looks like, oh yeah, look in grandpa's jam jars and you buy the mm -hmm. washer. This is not going to happen. Yeah? The inner diameter and the outer diameter of the hole are very particular. You will not find a washer for it. If you go to Stumac, three washers, which you don't know how many you're going to need, cost you £28 plus import and duties and all the rest of it, yeah? yeah. We have a lathe here, we make our own, yeah? yeah. Plus a washer is a washer, you know? Yeah. And <clears throat> we just take a bar, run it down to the right, out of diameter, drill the hole, and then just slice them up, and then we've got a handful of washers, yeah? So if you ever run out of threshold, or prep on the threshold, Come here and get yeah. yourself some washers. Because yeah. <clears throat> um, you might end up needing two or three washers or one really big one, you know. Mm. Um, but we make them ourselves, just do. Yeah. Cost the cost of it is ridiculous. Yeah. And like I said, Grandpa's gem jars are not going to. Yeah. Besides which, they're all rusty. <laughs> <laughs> Just one, one more question on the truss yeah. rod. I, yeah. I've got a mate on EVG 808 Artist yeah. and it's from the inside of the guitar at the bottom yeah. and I had to get like a like a special tool to, yeah. to, to adjust that that yeah. looks just like a... Um, so it's not an Allen key, it's like the opposite. So like a, uh, 
Yeah, that's a little bit different. So I'm guessing that, that yeah. they've done it just the other way round. So you yeah. adjust it from the bottom rather than the bottom. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether it's both sides or it's just the bottom. Yeah, because you get it on some electrics where it's at the bottom as yeah. well, don't you? Yeah. Because and electrics can be a real nuisance. Mm. Because Fender does a slot on the bottom of the neck. And you cannot adjust them unless you take the neck off. Mm. So it's a total hit and miss game. Yeah. You adjust it, you have to put the whole guitar back together, leave it sit on the tents and measure it, hope, hope you're getting there, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's it, a, it's on acoustic, sorry, you kind of put it in and yeah. have a little thing, kind of, you're still under yeah. tension and everything, so. Yeah. But, talking about setting the threshold, everything you do on a guitar is a balancing act. So if you move one thing, everything else will go out. So you have to go up and down and up and down mm. to bring the whole balance. Yeah. yeah. If you move the threshold, the length from there to there will change. Ah, so the intonation. Yeah. So your intonation will mm. change. Yeah. So assuming you find that perfect point, you need to check your intonation on the twelfth and then on acoustic guitar you've got about two and a half mil to play with, three and a half mil to classical, two and a half mil. And then you move that point, you file that point on your saddle anchor until you've got the intonation to do. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> if you if you can't measure anything or and you want your guitar just back to basic factory setting. Adjust your threshold just to the intonation. Yeah. yeah. So the intonation is quite easy to check at home as well. Put a clip on tuner on your headstock, get it perfectly in tune, and then play like an open E, hold down the 12th fret, play that again, mm -hmm. and it should be bang on in tune. And if it's slightly sharp, then the string needs to go longer. And if it's slightly flat, then the string needs to go shorter. Right. Because that's a lot easier on electrics, like kind of just moving yeah. the, the back and forth a little bit. Yeah. But acoustic, yeah. I've always wondered about that because it's yeah. you can't really move the bridge so much. So no. the saddle you can file, yeah. you can file that angle into the saddle. Right. Okay. But the problem with doing that string per string is that you throw off what's called the curvature. So the, the fingerboard and the frets are built into a curvature, and yeah, we've got some gauges there. So it will be part of like a, a 14 inch circle. Mm. Um, most acoustic guitars are at a 14 inch radius or curvature. And we want the saddle and the nut to match yeah. that yeah. radius. Otherwise, you're gonna, that's going to cause buzzes if the curvature yeah. isn't right. Yeah. So a lot of the time, the saddles and the nuts are kind of batch components that they pull out of buckets. Yeah. But just hang them around. It's just a single set of curvature gauges. So the number on it is yeah. the inch circle. So just if it says that's not the radius. That's the, is that the radius? No, that's, that's the radius. radius. Yeah. Radius, yeah. yeah. I must. I'll confess. I do have some Chinese made ones, and they they're so badly made. They've they've still got the burr on the edges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the string has to slip off. <laughs> Yeah. So a lot of the time, the saddles and the nuts on mass-produced guitars just come out of the bucket and they're all the same radius. So a lot of the time you'll see like a 14-inch radius on the fingerboard, but then like a 20-inch yeah. radius on the saddle, which means that your your um, D and the G strings sit a lot yeah. lower. Than and that's, the I mean, that's so frustrating because I'm really pernickety with tuning. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I really am, I'm just because I'm a banjo yeah. player as well. Tuning is everything, you know. <laughs> nothing sounds worse than a uh, tune, uh. five, six, a five string banjo. Um, so tuning is, is is critical, and I I often wonder um, if it's because of just very very finite intonation issues at, mm. on the saddle, yeah. and I'm not getting it. Yeah, because yeah. with a banjo you can and floating bridges, yeah, you can move it around. You can move it yeah. yourself and rely on your yeah. ear actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. you can't do that with uh, acoustic saddles. But sometimes with a banjo, you have to also just 
slop out the inner tittle string and move mm. move that point a little bit over. Mm. Yeah. Like the guitar where you have the B string <coughs> sits on a different point mm -hmm. on the intonation. Yeah. Yeah. Can the intonation ever really be like 100% correct? Yeah. Because yeah. like, I've seen these weird guitars where the frets are like all different kind of shapes. Yeah, 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 have you seen those? And they're, they're to apparently make it... Oh yeah, you get fan frets and then yeah, and there's the yeah, ones where they're actually like... That's the whole temperament. Ah, right, okay, yeah. Um, it's meant to mean that every single note on the fingerboard is perfectly intonated. Mm. Um, but to be honest with you, if you've got a well made guitar, you can get it pretty much yeah. perfect. Because anyway. they, they intonate mm. nuts as well, don't they, on some guitars? Yeah, but that's. <laughs> Listen, you can intonate a nut, but what will happen if you put down a chord? That nut's not going to do anything anymore. Mm. Yeah. It's okay on the open string. But mm -hmm. I personally yeah. don't see the point no. on the internet nut. There's a lot in the guitar world that costs a lot of money. And You're not getting I personally, mm -hmm. I know I, I haven't done it very long yet, you know, yeah. but I don't see the point, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Enhanced sustain and enhanced tuning stability are the two most used marketing words for pieces of equipment that are very expensive and I don't see the point. So it's far yeah. more important to intimate than that behind the guitar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you want to get the intonation there right and have your frets absolutely spot on. Yeah. So a while back there was there was a big move towards zero fret guitars. Yeah. And that seems to have gone away again. What, yeah. How, how do you feel about that? Uh, a zero fret is an ideal situation in my opinion, in the sense that you get your height and your curve right in one go. Because making a nut is a very complex thing to do. Um, and you can do away with all that complexity by just having a slot so that strings it exactly on the right spot mm -hmm. and then let your zero fret do the work. It will make a slight difference in sound. But yeah. the sound would be the same as a fretted note. Yeah. So um, it makes the sound well, more. Well, it, it seemed to make so much sense to me and then. Yeah, it went away again. Yeah, what, so what is that? Sorry. Idea. So, so zero frets is a frets, yeah. Oh yeah, I've zero seen that. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was going to say, because I've yeah. seen it with the nut and the fret there. Yeah. I thought it would completely make the nut, like yeah. you wouldn't need it, but no. Yeah. Well, well, you, still, well, you still need the nut to hold the strings. Right, yeah. 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 Well, I have a word about the nut in a minute. <laughs> and complexity on the nut itself. One more time, back to the fret line. <coughs> so the fret line is dressed to perfection. With like a leveling bar. Yeah, so these are also very precisely machined bars. We stick sandpaper over the top, run it over the top, make sure that all the frets are the same height. Then, unfortunately, I didn't take any down. Those come in all kinds of different lengths. So if you have the small problems to address, you are know, like tapering off the bottom end. Mm. You use a small one. Um, of course, if you run this up and down, then you touch that once and that twice. So it takes a lot of skill to get this to perfection. Where we've got bars that are, you know, way longer than the board itself. Mm. So that won't happen. And then we've got bars with the curve in it. Yeah, so that radius is in the bar. Mm. So as we run it over, we get a radius in it at the same time. That's yeah? great. 
and they're also very handy for the saddles as well. Yeah, so if you, you would have to have that slope on the yeah. saddle as well. Yeah. So you can get the radius blocks for the sandpaper on the bottom, mm. and you can re-radius the top of the saddle to match. Mm. Yeah. So in a lot of guitars have have the, the pin to hold the string in, yeah. and a lot of them are now starting to feed it through from the from the back. Yeah. And the nations do. I think that the one that we look at. Yeah. 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 Loudon, um, yeah. Loudon yeah. That, yeah. What does that do to the stresses? Which, which is going to give you less lift um, on the belly? Let, well, we'll have a word about that in a, in a minute. We'll go to the separate, the separate, okay. separate item. Yeah, but it's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. With, with the frets as well, um, yeah. do you guys work on steel frets at all? Ever we open? do high carbon stainless steel. Ah, oh, nice. Ah, uh, cool, because I, I got my mate on refretted with steel yeah. frets. I'm not sure exactly what ones they are, but I was I was tired of wearing out the bottom, you know, like the yeah. on on nickel ones. So I I yeah. got it refretted um, with stainless steel. It 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 wasn't. It was a friend of mine that he he's a guitar luthier, but but not as experienced, like the same age as me, and it's kind of what he was doing. So I'd be interested to bring it in and, and for you guys yeah. to have a look at it and see if it needs it. But yeah, steel string, because yeah, a lot of places wouldn't do it. I, I really wanted yeah. to get it refretted and they were like, no, sorry, we won't work with steel nice. string frets because it Most wears out the thing. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. so I'm glad you guys do because yeah. I wanted someone to have a look at it. So. We do it as a standard. Ah, yeah. But uh, it requires completely different tool set. Mm. And that's why not many people in the country Touch yeah, this guy said it wore out his, his cutters like in one refret. Most yeah. nickel frets will have a steel content in them, mm. but most like nickel steel frets that you see would be like between a 12 and 20% steel content. The better quality ones go up to about 36% steel content. Then you have stainless steel frets, which I think I've got. are quite a lot harder. And then you've got high carbon stainless steel frets, which is what we work, which has a, a high carbon content within the stainless steel, and it's it's as hard as a rock. Yeah, because I I've, I got that done probably about four years ago, and I have I can't see any fret wear mm. on it at you all since I've done that. Is that, is that yeah. the difference between the A4 and the A2 cut stainless? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Do you get any tonal differences though? With it's a little bit brighter, but yeah. it's. It's kind of negligible, really. If you want to go back to old fashioned brass frets or so, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you compare to nickel, very, very minimal. But then I would also say fretting is an expensive job. Mm -hmm. Have something that you're not going to wear out again to me. Mm. I will put my money on that. Yeah. yeah. But I'll let them look at some minimal difference in tonal quality. We had a customer request a nickel refret, and he was back three, four years later for another refret. Mm -hmm. and he just wanted nickel. Problem for us is because we've got all the same steel tools. Working nickels like working butter. Yeah, yeah so he was gone. gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They wear the strings out quicker as well. It's about the polishing. Mm. Yeah. And if you look closely at the top of the fret, on most guitars, it's pretty rough. Yeah. We polish to 10,000. Um, 8,000 grit is one micron. We can pass mm. that. We go to 10,000. And that is so smooth. If you're bending a string, it, you, you, you don't hear any of the stretching. It's frictionless. Most yeah. 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 It's the diamond grade polishing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's all about getting the top level mm. absolutely spot on. Yeah. Here's yeah. Um, one of the fret files that we have, which is rated for, for stainless steel. And this one we um you see is concave fretting mm. watches. Mm. So that one is for the fret edges and the sides of the frets to get the crown right and also to, to round off the edges of the frets. 
um, but we have a, a whole set of those here. So what what are they made out of? Are they steel as well? Or like a, yeah. Maybe also steel, yeah. yeah. So they do need to be replaced every now and then. Mm. Um, but they they're the ones that we found do the do the best job. Um, any any files, especially metal working files, you need to keep them. In it's a beautiful uh, tool, isn't it? It's really yeah. nicely balanced. Yeah. Do you do you get find it clogging the teeth at all? Uh, if it does clog the teeth, then um, just a little wire brush to clean them back out. Yeah, but actually, and they're very good sometimes. Yeah. They're just a job. Yeah. To stop them together. Yeah. But we found that those files have been extremely good on, the, on that. But, yeah. The standard clown and crow. You know, the you don't use that type of tin of paint, do you? No. <laughs> 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 clown, where you can replace the, the cutting bits to different sizes, mm. use those as well, but they will jab it more quickly, and they get a rough edge. But then we have a set purely diamond based, and that will run that out completely, you know, and they don't jab it. Yeah. And then, so, if you want to do a quick job on cutting, you press the cut to oversize, yeah. We we use uh, special towels with have the correct radius in. So first of all the flats are gonna be cut to size and they come in a block with you know one two three four so we you know what each thread is. They go through a radius a radius machine. To get a slightly bigger radius in than what we need. And then we, we use a pillar drill and we press each thread in separately. And the pillar drill has got this big cowl block in where you can change the radius and it presses so you, ju you just using it as a gentle fly press? Yeah, yeah, rather than hammering, and then that's how we do. Uh, so does that got, keep it balanced across the whole, the yeah. same pressure yeah. rather, yeah. yeah. We've got a special block for this whole neck piece to sit in. And then we've got a, another piece, we, we always call it the toilet seat. <laughs> it goes over the body here, and it's got a big clamp that goes underneath the fretboard here to support this end, so you don't exceed too much pressure or cause damage by the way. So then we snip all the ends level with the board <coughs> and then we use like a filing block like this. The, um, what you see here the popsicles in this job you have to be able to make or remake your own tools towards the top. So this is like um, a 35 degree angle to get the first cut into the edges of the threads. So you um, run that up and down the neck. Um, yeah. Tapers in the, the edges of the threads. Yeah. Uh, and the popsicles are just on the last job because you didn't want to cut to the <coughs> or to the board itself to lift it. Up a little bit. <clears throat> and if we do things like that, those are most likely the super glue done by one of the technicians. We put tape on it first. We use a low tap tape. Yeah, and then we glue to the tape rather than if you're doing any kind of work, yeah. the tape on the super glue trick is is a brilliant trick. Yeah. So you put tape on both items that you want to glue together and then super glue the tape together instead of the items and then it holds incredibly well and then you can just peel them apart when you're done yeah. and it doesn't leave any residue. Yeah. The same, if you start working on this area it's very easy to slip or to damage the top. Well, we have some special rubber mats that can sit on there. <coughs> um, 
If not, what we do is we put a low tack tank. A low tack means it doesn't have a lot of adhesion strength. Yeah? Because you don't want to put tape. Say you have a really old guitar, a check of lacquer, and you put tape on, and you pull the tape off, and you pull half, half the lacquer off as well, yeah? So we, we call this low tack tape, yeah? So it doesn't stick very well. So we put that over the guitar. We always seal the sound hole up, so we don't want to get any rubbish going down the guitar itself. Once we cover that in a low tack tape, we put on that like gorilla tape or you know heavy duty thick tape which you would never put on a guitar but it sits on to the low tack stuff mm. yeah and then if you don't slip you're just scratching the tape yeah rather than the guitar and you don't stick this heavy tape mm. to the guitar itself so the low tack stuff is something we use for an awful lot of it so yeah. so just a Basically, a masking tape. It's, but it's a low tech masking tape. Yeah. Like paint and scrapes. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. 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 But about masking tapes, masking tape you use at home for your decorating things do not work in our world so well. Because if we have to go around the corner, that masking tape will always come up here. And if you were to spray, just the papers of the paint will make that come off. It's not like wall paint, yeah? So what we use is, is like an automotive tape, yeah? yeah? And that tape, A, it forms round curves and edges really well. <coughs> it hasn't got the type of stick that you might cause damage pulling it off. You can leave it on for several days, so it doesn't kind of harden out on the surface, and it can cope with solvents. Yeah. And it wouldn't, you know, if you put, if you go to churches and buy some tape and go around this corner, you see, you know, an hour later or so, it's coming up in this area. Yeah. So you need, you need specialist tapes for that as well. Yeah. So if you're gonna. If you're going to sell the tape, your song list on the side. We'll <laughs> <laughs> come and see you for the tape. Mm. <laughs> it has been done. You can use a sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should move on to the nut because it's getting on a little yeah. bit. Yeah. If we want to hit all the topics we want to cover. Yeah. So we've got another brilliant little tool that we wanted to show you. And it's this looks quite quite simple and basic. It's a little bracket that you put at this end of the neck and then you've got your magical feeler gauges again and you can put those underneath the strings. We've got a set without the, um, the feeler gauges without the clamp on them so you can choose exactly the ones and then you set that. So for making the nuts or filing in nut slots, this is a big time saver. It doesn't get you a perfect finish, you need to still go ahead and finish it afterwards. But this makes a two hour job a ten minute job. It's a really good, good bit of kit. So, what happens here is the, the feeler gauges will contort to the fingerboard. If you over tighten it, you'll get a hump in the middle. If you under tighten yeah, it, come over, look at it. Yeah, if you're ready to come over, look. Really good idea. So, you can't cut too deep. Mm -hmm. And then you have to start following yeah. again. Yeah. So, you're using the feeler gauge then as a sacrificial that you yeah, can set exactly. it. You end up in right. the okay. So, a very basic bit of tooling is a tyre tread checker. Yeah. So th this is the delivery tool, yeah? But this costs you a lot of money, yeah? To measure the height this of your press. This costs you yeah? a couple of quid in Trago. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that costs you a couple of quid in Trago. Don't shy away from that. You have to zero it out. Yeah. And then you can measure the height of your press. So this one's a, a mil, basically. Mm -hmm. So if you want your action to be half a mil here, you take a mil and a half of feeler gauge, put it into this clamp, cut to the gauge, 
and then it should be half a mil above your threads. Wow. Straight off the bat with the right radiance in. Mm. The only thing this doesn't do is if you want your to put a taper on it, so your top strings are a bit closer to the frets than your bass strings, it doesn't do that. It's just equilateral across mm. every string. So generally what we'll do is we'll either take the nut back off and work the bottom down at a bit of an angle, or we'll just go back in afterwards and touch up with some pliers and make the slits a little deeper. But this tool, ever since we got it, it's taken a two hour job, <laughs> turned it into a 20 minute job. It's, uh, it's I've just got up 10 minutes from the last time you said it. <laughs> yeah. That was 10 minutes ago. That was 10 minutes ago. Yeah. When I first started, I was told to rub pencil into those frets so that we lose string. Is that actually a myth or does it actually work? Yeah, no, because if you do that, you can see where you rub it off. The same when we work. It depends on, yeah. on the application. Yeah. So pencil uh, as a lubrication. Yeah. yeah. To let the strings go. Uh, oh right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes and no. Yeah. You know, you you end up putting more particulates into that nut. Yeah. So I would always recommend using a lubrication oil, but a well cut nut shouldn't need anything. Mm. Okay. Um, but just come back on that for a moment, yeah? Because when we do fretting, we go with a sharpie over the tops of the frets. So we blacken the tops of the frets out. And then we can see exactly what we tell it about. Yeah? Yeah. And that's an old trick in metal working. So I would put dye on and then mark it and we can see exactly what we're dying. Where I'd use pencil for the nut is if the nut slots are improperly cut and you get some buzzing of the string in the nut, you rub some pencil in, and generally what happens is there's not, there's not enough break angle on the string, so it's not resting at the front of the nut. The front of the nut is where you want the string to be resting. The rest of the slot basically just guides it. So you want to increase that angle and a little bit of pencil you can increase that break angle with some files and then make sure that there's still the pencil mark at the front of the nuts. If, if you could overdo the uh, uh, um, cutting or you know the removal of the nut material, if you just overdo it, um, I've heard people, I haven't done it myself, yeah. but is it a case of it really needs a new nut or a case of mixing up a little bit of nut bone and glue bone i've heard people do that is a temporary fix yeah and it is going to break out and generally yeah. it deadens the so it's it's a waste of time it's in a, the long run in yeah. my opinion it's a waste if of you're time. on a gig yes you do that yeah mixing yeah. any dust with a super glue makes it set in seconds you know yeah it goes really yeah. hard really quickly but it it will always chip out of the slots. Oh, I mean, so. it's, the, it's, it's the tone that I'm always interested in, you see, the tone because you're not getting that seat of the bone. I've noticed that yeah. I replaced a nut recently, and I was said that you know, they said, oh no, this makes such a minimal difference. Um, yeah. And I think it was a graft, graft tech nut before. I just didn't like it. And I replaced it with a bone nut. Yeah. So there's and, two ways of bone it. Bone nut. You can and it, shim it made bottom. it just sound better, you know. Yeah. So it just did. Yeah. You know? So yeah. I'm when it comes to advice, I mean I'm interested in tone, that's the thing. You know, yeah. Playability yeah. obviously is essential, but I will you know, make diff changes on the guitar for tone primarily. Um it, it's you know, you've got you've got to use your ear to judge all the time. Yeah. 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 Well, so, then just listen to people. That, yeah. That's my experience. Sorry. That was the best thing you said. Yeah. Don't listen to people. <laughs> well, no, I Make think, up your own mind. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, that, that's why I'm here today yeah. to listen to you guys because you've done some fantastic yeah. setups for, for me. And, you know, I can't, you know, rate you higher, but um, high enough. But um, uh, I was just in, interested in the. You know, quick fix things with nuts, and I, yeah. I didn't think that it was a good idea. So the quick fix that I would recommend, which doesn't actually take too long, 
Um, he's torn out to use a string packet. <laughs> no, that's also a, <laughs> a bit of a butcher job. Uh, it's shimming the bottom and then yeah. recutting the entire nut. Right. Yeah. So you can put a bit of shim material underneath the nut and raise generally, it up. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. raise it up. Do you, do you, if it's, do you glue a shim? Yeah, or do you glue do, a shim to you, the bottom. You glue a shim, yeah. 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 But <laughs> if you come back to your journal quality, we cut shims to just plastic shims. They're just standard, you know. So if you have a two, three, or five guitar, that doesn't matter. If it's your guitar, if the neck was made from mahogany and the neck was made of bone, then there's only two types of shim you can use mahogany or bone. Yes. Yeah. And if you move away from that, then people can hear the difference. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, on, in that situation, we wouldn't go for a shim box and take you know, a plastic shim and we would put on that. No. Yeah. Well, I, I, I had a Gibson Hummingbird, uh, a yeah. beautiful guitar, um, and it came from the factory. They didn't use a shim, but I'm talking about the uh, yeah. saddle now. They yeah. uh, use a bit of fag paper yes. to adjust it. Honestly. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen yeah. it. And that was a brand new guitar. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's a typical thing that you see. I mean, you can do that with two seconds. That's the yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. We call it very And, and, and for yeah. you, you know, I'd, and I'd never taken the saddle off. Yeah. And um, and I was always unhappy with the sound. I thought that it should sound better than this. Yeah. And it was when a guitar tech took yeah. the tech it apart. And the other know. thing is, on that same story piece, say, it's a little bit low on one side, then you stick a shim just to one side. Yeah. Okay. If you don't have that full contact. Yeah. Yes. And especially when you have a, a pickup on the lift there. Yes. Then the other strings don't sound out no. so well. Also, so, the, uh, in my opinion, it's got to be cut re- f- cut or filed really square. Yeah. So you've got an absolute Absolutely. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. square yeah. bottom to it. What we've got there are nut slotting files. Ah. Yeah, if you see, they've got all the number on. So they've got we got a whole set that is to each uh, gauge string. That we've got a different file. They're very special files, mm. and. Uh, there's an other special thing on those files is that the cutting edge is perfectly round. Yeah. So if you have any normal file, the cutting edge is a flat cutting edge. If you do that and you let the string run through a slot like that, it doesn't work. Yeah. I'm, I'm amazed how little you need to cut to get to the way you want to. Yeah. It's almost like just touching it, you know. Yeah. Well, First of all, string spacing. String spacing, the strings aren't spaced evenly because they're all different diameters. Yeah? So that is a formula. You can work that all out if you want to spend your time. We use those special rulers. And if you see They've got bass and treble on it, yeah, so you know which side they go along, yeah, bass, treble, yeah, so that's your sixth string on that side and the first string on that side. This is a gauge with um, 0.5mm slots in it, so you can sit it on top of your material and go with 0.5mm pencil through the slots. To work it all out, mm. and then um, any instrument is is on there. If you have a twelve-string guitar, you work out one set, six strings, and then you work out the spacing between those, and then you move it up and do your next set of six. <coughs> and the bendy. So they can go off the curves and things. Incredible precision. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, and this is because if you want to work out the right string spacing, you have to every time take half the diamond of your string off the spacing. Mm. Yeah, because otherwise the slot between the strings won't be correct. Mm. If you just do all the centers, mm. then as the string goes quicker, the slots are getting narrower. And with the gauges as well, so um, would you specifically do it, say, for a set of 12s on an acoustic? Yeah, would, would that, would... we've got a 12. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I, I sometimes I put 12 and sometimes I put 13s on my acoustic and it, yeah. it, it kind of worked, but you know, that yeah. the, the, the 13s might... still fit through, but yeah. you'd want it cut yeah. different you know, different for both gauges, really. If, if, if you want to start absolutely perfect, then if you go for 13s, cut the slot to 13s, yeah? And it saves you also pinging when you tune in. Yeah. So yeah. you get more precise tuning, yeah? Mm. And then, of course, the nut slots are cut under an angle, yeah? So the front of the nut is where the inclination line starts. Mm. So that nut slot wants to be dipping off this, this, and that, and then we'll come directly to your point of your pins. Um, is what we call the brake angle. Yeah. yeah? And the brake angle is important because we want those vibrations to go into the material. Yeah? If this was a straight line, those vibrations will just carry on, carry on here. Yeah. Yeah? Like if you see old ice stock guitars with the strings over, a lot of the jazz players used to put a sock around the strings there to stop that from happening. Mm. Yeah? <coughs> um, Just one last thing with the yeah. nut slots as well. This guitar is optimum for it. You see the, especially the E space E string here. Mm. How deep that slot is. It's only not very halfway deep way up the string. Yeah, if that. So that is optimal for it not catching in the slots. Ah, okay. Still, because of the brake angle, it gives enough pressure so it won't move up and down. Um, but then also if you say changing the gauges of strings, that that kind of depth of slot means that you get a lot less pinching problems mm. um, yeah. than if it were to be really deep. Mm. Is, is that the, one of the reasons you get a string breakage because of the yeah. tightness? Yeah. yeah. So when you're, if you've got a really pinchy nut, then you're tensioning this portion of the string mm. more than this portion, mm. which puts uneven strain mm. So frustrating. The string. Yeah. Yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. Especially with a new set of 20 quid strings. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Another thing on this guitar, you can see that those slots aren't cut straight over. Yeah. They cut so they an angle. cut towards an angle. Mm. Sometimes they cut little funnels into it to assist that. Yeah. So that front of the nut, that is your major point. Mm. What you want to get right. If that dips on the front, you get all kind of buzzing and inclination problems. I mean, these are all the things that, you know, if you, especially if you're buying a new guitar straight out of the factory, say, if you're buying a new Martin, you, you naturally expect all these things to be checked. Don't yeah, you? no. Mm. I mean, that's what you're paying for, though, really, isn't it? You know, yeah. that sort of level. Yeah, it's a real nuisance. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real nuisance. And in the higher end, I used to do a lot of Gibson guitars. People had good reasons for buying those, mm. but I was the one that opened the box. Yeah, yeah. And then mm. go first to the workshop yeah. to get all those. And it's a nuisance. It's like buying a new car, but now you have to pump up the tires. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's. Uh, but it's a bit what it is. If you look more towards leisurely made guitars, you expect that to be to a yeah. far higher level. Yeah. But building and all this setup works are actually two different Yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So brake angle, the optimal yeah. brake angle is five degrees. Um, a little less, and you can get vibrations travelling through to the inactive part of the string. Oh, you don't want to be so, less than five degrees. Yeah. The nut to the saddle, that's what we call the active string, so that's what's generating the tone, 
the saddle to the pins and the nut to the machine heads is the inactive portions. You don't want those to vibrate. You no. want the, the sound transfer all to be all in that, that yeah. section. So the five degrees you're talking about the nut, are you? The nut and yeah. also oh. the saddle. So the saddles on a pin bridge are generally more. Mm. Um, but going back to the point of having a, a bridge that's unpinned where you string up from the back, mm. Um, they're always built with a minimum of a five degree break angle to attend for that um, kind of downwards pressure. So, in a way, I prefer the pinless bridges like Loudon make because um, the string doesn't bend as much in so many points and you're not pulling the top from the bottom of the top. We're pulling it from the side here so it's actually technically stronger however a lot of those pinless bridges you're stringing through the bridge material and it's just just a hole in the wood so if there's this wood is natural you know if there's a soft spot in that wood we've seen a lot of them where they can split on the pinless um, holes so the only one that i've ever seen which is a luthier handmade instrument where they actually inserted copper rods in and that metal just added a, a good bit of kind of yeah. you know structural integrity there mm -hmm. so it wouldn't have them so pinless bridges are great they pull the top in a different way um, and they still got all the brake angle that you need even if you take the saddle right down um, and yeah like I say you're, you're pulling the top from kind of this this motion instead of that motion so you're less likely to get an overall belly. What not, what not the effect of tone is, you see, because um, I think Cat Stevens, he was my big influence as an acoustic guitar player. I love the J Hunt J180 that he played. And so I bought one, you know, I haven't got it now. But he used those early 1960s J180s were pinless bridges. Yeah. 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 And, but, and the tone was great. Yeah. But... If you have a pin, the anchoring point is from inside the guitar where the ball end sits. And you've got a bridge plate underneath, uh, but the grain flies the other direction, so it doesn't. The ball end doesn't dig in to the top. The benefit you have that if you want to make small tonal changes to the guitar, you can change the pin material. Mm. And it makes quite a difference. Oh, it does. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have a pin splits, then of course you haven't got that no, option. No. Yeah. Um, another thing with pin bridges, what you could get it if people drop the saddle so low is that you start losing this brake angle. I think that's what might have happened with mine. I've, yeah. I've got quite a bit shaved off that. Yeah. 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 Well, if you want to build up the brake angle, there is no problem. You need that style file again. And you go for the pin slot and file it out. So you bring that slot closer to the saddle and then you create more brake angle. I think that's what also what the guy yeah, did to my accused it because I noticed, especially on those low ones, there's a lot more of a dip yeah. Yeah. in there. So this one has that built into it so it's what we call a dual stage bridge right so the pins sit lower than the top of the bridge material however on your vintage martins larivae the same see this They're bridge is just just flat mm. so you can see in the in the top oh, strings yeah. there uh, there's actually it's quite it's sizable it's yeah. slots there to make that break angle mm. and you can increase those um and if you've got a bridge which doesn't have them, it's handy to, to add them in mm. to get enough brake angle. I've got a job keeping my pins on a couple of um, strings, actually yeah. keeping the pins in. It's like it doesn't yeah. want to grip, you know, I yeah. notice sometimes it, it just it's just quite yeah. loose in there. Yeah. But I think that's because it was a bit was shaved out of it. Yeah, that could be. Mm. The pins are tapered, so they're kind of locking through mm. the taper. But at the end of the day, 
the pressure of the ball end should hold that thing in place. Yeah, it does in the end. I just have to grip it a bit and yeah. keep doing it until it <laughs> until it grips there. But um, you can have pins a slightly bigger. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, those yeah. holes wear out and that's a common problem. Um, and in the worst case scenario, we dowel them in, but I've been drilled them. Mm. I suppose you can you can turn pins here as well, presumably, yeah, if you yeah, want. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, can I just ask one thing about pins? Because I'm interested in uh, pins a lot. Um, slotted or unslotted? What what would you what do you recommend? Well slotted. Always slotted. Yeah. 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 Why because why do they actually, offer non-slotted bridge pins then? Then the slot is in the saddle itself. Mm. Yeah, but you better leave oh. that alone. Yeah, because like like we just uh, addressed, if you get break angle problems, then you can rectify that. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Unslotted pins could make trap the string between mm. the the top plate and the bridge um, with against the pin, mm. so you can end up with more damage than the unslotted ones. So the unslotted are always safer that. And then make sure also that your ball pulls straight onto the bridge plate. Yeah. It doesn't catch up. Yeah, and have a nice tight, you know, because the bottoms of the pins can wear. And yeah. The bottoms terrible. of the pins, <coughs> there's one thing with pins, the middle plate pins, we always do this. I stick the pins onto one of the disc senders and cut a slant bottom on it. Yeah, because it's so easy for that ball end to get pushed down by the pin. Mm. And if you cut, cut a slant to it, then the pin, the ball end will slip automatically off the mm. pin. And a lot of pins are just straight from the bottom. And it can be a real problem to put the string in, push the pin down, mm. and the pin pushes the string down mm. even further. You can see on the winding, because the winding always just sticks a little bit out, that, you know, that that string sits in place. Yeah. Um, uh, what about brass or bronze pins? It, yeah. it seems to be that adding more mass yeah. to the bridge is actually inhibiting it resonating rather than... It's about the hardness of the material. So if you want it really bright, then you go for that kind of material. It's also when you go to the metals, um, if you think of like knocking a, a metal railing, how quickly that vibrational energy travels down it. Um, so it's, then it's a lot the, faster. The pin is not where your sound's coming from. The sound's coming from the... People will argue about that point. <laughs> <laughs> This is the active portion of string. Yeah. However, there's still vibrational energy, mm -hmm. and the most of your, your, um, like you were saying yesterday, with the top being like the speaker, yeah. the bridge is that that driver in the centre of the speaker, and then the, the sound hole is the end. That's it. Now, it's, this is exactly why I was asking the question mm -hmm. because on a speaker, you want the cone to be really light because it's got to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. if you add mass by yeah, yeah. putting heavy pins, yeah. Yeah. you're inhibiting that. So I would have thought that putting the, the heavy pins would have actually accentuated the base of notes because I, it's not going to let the, yeah. the fine mm. movements. You, it's going to be a subtle effect. Mm. But um, that, that was the way up. Yeah. That, it's, a, it's a dramatic effect and a lot of experimenting with pitch pins <laughs> mm. in my sad little life but um, I bought a guitar in today that's got bronze pins on a, um, and it, it, in my experience it suppresses the sound, metal suppresses it, it um, uh, sorry to conflict with yeah, what no, you said no, no. Um, Walter but uh, I've, I found, well certainly with the jumbo guitar so I've Played with it has uh, almost like a sort of muting effect, which can be okay. It depends what you're yeah, after, absolutely. and it, it can sound really smooth, really smooth. So it can turn a 
but really bright guitar out into a, Mellow it a bit. yeah it's like all the sort of you know sine waves are being leveled off it's like putting the electric guitar through a compressor that's the that's the experience i've had with that, brass that was and just from the basic physics that's what i would have expected yeah, yeah. which you know it can yeah. be nice especially if you're in a studio or something and you want an effect in a studio on, off an acoustic and you don't want a kind of really jangly I've thing. found the best use for bronze pins was a, a 12 string I bought I had one missing and I just happened to have a set so I just put six of those yeah the others and sold it on yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it will it will make quite a difference on the guitar itself yes and Many, many years ago, I worked with this old musician who would always argue the point with me. Till one day, I took a guitar, kept on changing the things on it, and it would make or break the guitar. Yes, yeah. yeah. It could have a complete opposite effect yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But generally, we would say the harder the material, the brighter mm. the guitar. But I'm more than happy to accept your point. On well, it just depend, it depends on the guitar. On I, yeah. I think, I think, yeah, yeah. just say the harder the material, yeah. so a hard bone, I, yeah. I'm completely with you on that, but it's, yeah. it's the actual mass of putting a metal one in yeah. is what I'm yes. talking Yes, yes. Yeah, 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 so yeah, I, so I think, I'll, I'll, I think I'll we're probably we're agreeing from, from, from different directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I personally, I really like bone. Actually, I've I've experimented, experimented a lot with pins. Um, snake wood is a really good one. Yeah. Because that's supposed yeah. to be the hardest wood of all. Yeah. Yeah. But I found, generally speaking, a really well-made bone pin. Is that that suits me? Yeah. And also ebony. But it depends how well made they are. Yeah. Actually. And bone. If we come back to bone, most bone is bone pipe these days. The old instruments were always camel shin bone. Yeah, yeah I, I yeah. like camel. I yeah. like camel bone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And camel stew's not bad either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, so next time I'm in Egypt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring me back. Have you got an uh -huh. on your meter? I'm okay on the meter, but yeah. I, I've actually got an appointment right bang on at 12, and I, yeah. I'm really enjoying this, so <laughs> I'm going to have to go. And um, I'm sorry if I've. Yeah. Uh, it's really like interesting because you haven't finished yet. It's been absolutely yeah. fascinating. Yeah. And well, um, I haven't moved to the electric guitar. I know. <laughs> well, I'm an acoustic guitar player, so I'm okay for that. But sorry, gents. I, would you excuse me? I, yeah, I have please. to go now. Yeah. Have, yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, um, are you coming back to Ashford? Um, I'm. I've got to go on to Whittacombe after this. Yeah. Um, uh, to do some rehearsals, um, actually. Shall we have a call about your guitar? Or Can I call or, you? Uh, yeah. Would that be okay in the yeah. next few days? So there's, obviously, there's yeah. things I need to discuss with, yeah. with you, yeah. particularly with uh, the, the the Sterling banjo. Yeah. Um, but when when is the when is the auction taking place? The auction is fifth of December. So we've got some more time. Uh, yeah, we're taking all the items up on Monday. Yeah, um, so the auction will have them in their possession then. Right. Um, but then we can we can discuss after that. Yeah. To do it's not a problem. Right. Yeah. So perhaps if I can I phone you tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not we've got tomorrow. We've got a lot of masterclasses on tomorrow. Yeah. 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 So maybe Monday be better. Monday be better. Uh, yeah. Monday we're on the road. Unless oh. you keep oh, on calling my mobile. No. I'll, uh, if I can call you tomorrow, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm going to the and I'll be back in five. Yeah, okay. If I'll, um, I'll try and avoid the well, the I'll call you in bed. Yeah. So I'll keep you calling home. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's fine. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'll do that then. No, All right. No, I'm going to surely get down to it. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is the auction in this country or is it? Yeah, yeah it's up in the bar. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. yeah. <coughs> Lovely. Okay then. Okay. Um, well, sorry That's to see really you good. go. Yeah. You're not I... going to play a song before you go. No, no. I, I, I'm literally meeting um, a, uh, a Russian lady right now in right. Taylor's. And, uh, you know, she's made a, a, an effort to get here. Yeah. But um, uh, thank you very much. It's absolutely yeah. fascinating. I, I thought it was just for an hour, so... Um, well...
We tried to get all things quicker than we did yesterday. Yeah. But there is, we can talk all day about it. You know, oh, there's yeah. so many things to discuss. Yeah, so, so many elements. So, so many elements, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'd love and to also different experiences, again. you know. Yeah. Of what you did to your guitar, what yeah. I did to my guitar, and then, yeah. yeah. So all this is just interesting. It's an incredible yeah. learning process. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah. we all we really yeah. love our instruments. Yeah. yeah. Right. You better get going. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Okay. Cheers, <laughs> Good to see you. Here. <coughs> Do we have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Or any topics you'd like us to cover? Or anything that what were you What were you going to do on the electric? If, if um, was it basically just similar things as far as the electric? Yeah, there's concerned? a few things that are slightly different on the electric. Right. Yeah. Do you want to move on to the electric? Um, I'm I, yeah. I'm happy to move on to the electric as long yeah. as anyone else yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to bring my acoustic in for you guys to have a look at after this talk. I don't want to <laughs> make your brains all fall. Can I ask a really, really basic question? Yeah, go on. Yeah. How, what, what is the, in terms of string windings yeah. around the, the top, what's yeah. the minimum string winding that you can actually do to get the proper tension? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll come to that on this guitar on the electric, well, because okay. the electric can be different. Okay. Yeah. But... If you if you do from your sixth string one half turn and half turn more or that the other one, make sure that they come down. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes on electrics you want to play around. Mind your face. Yeah. There you go. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> So with straps, they can be a little bit fiddly to get them out the back of the blocks. Yeah. <laughs> Take an old one. Might need a little pokey, which we put down there, wouldn't we? No. No? Well, does it go out the way? Yeah, that was a great example. I normally find that works. <laughs> that? <coughs> yeah, it, if it comes up out of the block sometimes. Oh, it's, oh, it's yeah. in the block, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a great example, isn't it? Yeah, yeah time to do a hunky. Okay, well, I was hoping that was going to take 10 seconds. So with electric guitar, the, the fret line, the neck, the relief, all of that is the same as, as we covered on the acoustic. It's the same with the neck break angle, the angle that the neck's sat to. So again, we can do that straight edge check, and that should come pretty much the top of your, your saddle there. So the necks are always built with an angle there. So if you were to take the neck off, the bottom of that pocket isn't wrapped to the top of the body. There's always a bit of a taper there. If you are having troubles with the setup on the electric guitar, a lot of the time, you know, you might notice you've got a lot of grub screw poking out the top of the saddle, um, but the action's okay here. To rectify that, you can change the angle in the neck pocket and then you can set it up so it's, it's a cleaner setup. Um, that work? It's really yeah. interesting. Okay. Well, well, look at the straps first, that's really good. <laughs> well, a few difficult the straps. Sometimes you have to start the back right off. <coughs> Shall I grab another guitar then? We can sort that out in a second. Um, no, no, I just want. Okay. Clive, have you got a strap? Uh, I've got a telly. Got, got a telly. telly, okay. Well, we've got a kind of similar, similar situation and about stringing, yeah? yeah. 
See, those guitars have the inherent problem that you lose your break angle. Yeah. yeah. So, to deal with that, put more string around the back. Okay. Yeah. Right. To get more break angle. Or put uh, a retainer or a retainer bar on. Yeah. Yeah. That will all help as well. This is just the way straps on the legs, the neck, and the head stuff like that. Yeah. Um, mine's actually got two of these. Yes. Yeah. 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 And again, another 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 yeah. old guitar yeah. player said, start and try and get that at the bottom of the peg. Yeah. Is that yeah. Yeah. Is that to be recommended? It, it never, yeah, that's what. Right. It never works with me because I start her and it slips up as I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Put more string on. Okay. Yeah. So if you get more winds on, yeah. you get lower down the back. Can you have too much mm. winding? Can you actually don't, get a great big bulk of string at the top? And, and does that what you want value for money? <laughs> well, uh, it just looks Listen, like I'm mm. Yeah, don't cross over the string or go on top of the string. That's death. So you don't yeah. put one up inside and then wind it round so it catches the string? <clears throat> no. Oh. So how we string is we pull the string on, wind it around, and then go through the hole, and then bend them over. Oh, yeah. Not so hard first. Yeah. You pull the string up to the peg. Okay. Not through the peg, but up to the peg. Yeah. Wind it round. Yeah. And then put it through the hole wow. and bend it back on itself. Never done that before. I've never done that before. <laughs> yes. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Loads yeah. of people have told me. Complete opposite in terms yeah. of uh, uh, a lot of people don't know how to restring. It's the same with a lot of factories. Yeah. You get brand new guitars out of the box, and the restring is just absolutely best. Yeah. Well, well, well. Yeah. Going to try that. <laughs> yeah. It makes it quick so, and easy, mm. and you can control how many wines you have on the post. Mm. Yeah. Very okay. Easily. Yeah. Um, and you know, even this guitar is not burning too strong up because I want to see a bit more wind on the bows there, on the thinner strings than on the yeah, thicker yeah. strings. And this um, comb over and under is a thing we do on the fixed strings on classical guitars, right. but we don't do on the steel strings. Well, well, well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, straps, calyx. Yeah, get more break angle, get more strength out of it. Okay. Yeah. Do you want, do you want to do it? I've got an 11 here, so you can three fingers three 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 under, and that was enough string for yeah. them to... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's easier to see with the thicker string. And certainly to bring it back and up. Since yeah. It was what well, I've yeah. seen in so many books. Yep, and me. Oh, <laughs> just another one on the Bang. Mm -hmm. Handy little tool. Mm -hmm. That's a ball pin out. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a nightmare sometimes. I've even like, <laughs> get it out. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> two teaspoons ah, is yeah. a classic. Um, pliers will damage the pin. So with a pinned bridge acoustic, I always put a bend just at where the, the wind finishes. So that bend, not quite a 90 degree, but close to it, means that you won't have the ball sat on the bottom of the pin. You can kind of tuck it round in and put ah, the pin. Nice. So, it makes it quick and easy. So you put it in and then you bend it round on itself. And you put the pin in, give it a little pull, up to the top here, spin it round the post. Pin string four or five times. Yeah. Depends on how much tension you put on. We all do slightly different ways. Um, I, I actually only do it twice. Depends on, on the guitar. And spin it back on itself. So that's through the In whole opposite thing. direction of the general back, yeah? Right. Bend it back, yeah? And that's 
snip it off really good with time to save one shit out of it. And keep the tension on. Well, that was quick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's in those. <coughs> Done. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then you get the old stretch out for a bit. Yeah. We just um, generally leave them up at tension. Really? If you really pull them and stretch them, you can end up pulling little um, kind of tension marks into the string, and they might break quicker. Mm. Yeah. So, so when you leave the nylon, do it because I like to be Well, I, I, with my steel string as well, I, I, I tend to have to do it quite a bit before it really sits like yeah. like in tune. But I don't I don't know like because after I've bent it a few times, so okay, it stops kind of detuning a bit and and. So what I tend to do with my steel when I restring it completely is just tune it E sharp to E sharp, and then leave it right. sat in the corner, and then a half an hour an hour later it's in E, and it's stretched and good to go. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All these old habits that are starting to yeah. be debunked. So, <laughs> so, really, so you really don't pull it, and you really. Uh, I, I never do. If even even on them. even on bass guitars. Yeah. If you come yes. in for a restring here, the strings are never pulled. Good. Habits. Oh wow. Yeah. 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 Un unless you're out on the kick the yeah. next hour or something like that, yeah, or it's a classical, and you're a total beginner, then. Then I'll pull the strings. Yeah. But so otherwise, just tune them sharp, leave it so far. Could have made those wines go a bit yeah. tighter, mm -hmm. but you can see it's nice yeah. and clean. Well, well, well. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> there's no slipping there. You don't need to go back on itself or tie a knot. Yeah. Any, any of those knotting or pulling yeah. it back on itself will just make a habit for taking the string off in the future. So this makes it nice and easy to step the string off. Well, well, well. <laughs> well, quickly back to the electric then? Yeah. <coughs> So all the neck, fret, break angles, all that is the same as acoustic guitar. And as we said before, some nuisance vendors have the threshold down there. And mm -hmm. it's total nuisance. If you can afford having a guitar like that, please do so. Because mm -hmm. you have to take the neck off to really set up. Then Ryan mentioned already about the script screws on the bridge. A bridge like this, the saddles can be different, can be numbered one to three, there's three different types. There's slightly new di little differences, and the script screws, there are three different sizes script screws in as well. Yeah. The grub screws are the, the height setting screws, and then you've got the intonation screws, which are also different lengths too. Yeah, so if you take a bridge like that apart, just keep an eye on that. If that's the case in your bridge, just make sure that you know what's number two, one, two, and three. Yeah. <coughs> and yeah, so this those set your playing height and your curve, and those set your intonation. Yeah. So on a tremolo unit instrument, you have the spring tension on the back. So on an acoustic guitar, the neck is balancing the tension in the strings, and the same thing is happening here, but then you're also balancing the tension in the strings with the spring tension in the back of the bridge here. So you don't want it, it depends on how you want the bridge, some people like it with a bit of back travel, um, but most of the time you just have the downwards travel. And Yes, it can be a nightmare for tuning stability, but um, if you set them right, then they should be absolutely fine. Yeah. So it's just about balancing the tensions throughout the whole instrument, which can take a little while to get it all balanced and set up nicely. Uh, but once you have it, it's kind of reaches an optimal and will set it into itself. Do yeah. six fixing screws for the bridge. Don't go all the way down to the bridge. Yeah. So if you take them off, 
So we can do either you put a feeder cage on top of the bridge plate and screw them to the feeder cage, or you set the bridge where you want it to travel to, mm -hmm. and then carefully set a screw to where it stops them and then let it go. And then you've got enough space on the screw head for that movement to If you were to allow. screw those screw heads in as all the way as hard as they can, there wouldn't be any travel here on the bridge. Right. So you need for those screws to be relaxed. They work as a pivot point, not as a mm -hmm. fixing point. For the rest of it, it's all pretty much the same as what we've covered, yeah. other than obviously you've got pickups, pickups. and electrics. Yeah. So in here, the pickups are magnets, they generate a magnetic field, and the string disturbs that magnetic field, which is what creates the voltage output, which then gets sent to your amp. Mm -hmm. um, there's, we can get very technical about pickups, and go into a whole other subject to mm -hmm. keep it kind of short and sweet. But on some straps, you've got the little metal pole pieces. Those can either be magnetic or they can be non-magnetic. If they're non-magnetic, then there's a magnet that's attached to the bottom of it. So what you have is magnets with a copper coil that winds around them. You get a start and finish off that copper coil. It kind of works like... Um, like an inductor, really. Um, so, two pickup wires come off it, and one would be your pickup start, one would be your pickup finish. And um, the string disturbing that magnetic field is what creates that voltage signal through the copper, copper wire. The How copper vital is pickup height? Yeah. Pickup height is the next thing. So, Walt had a great analogy for this, um, which we've been using for years. Imagine a light beam. So, you've got the light. And the beam of light. The pickup height kind of, if you, you imagine that coming off one of the pole pieces, if it's too high then the string will move outside of that beam of light so you're not picking up its optimal kind of sound frequency. If it's too low then that beam of light is, is really wide and it will pick up the next string and start getting muddy. So there is an optimal place mm. for that height of that pickup to be caught in that magnetic field. And how do you know what that optimum point Generally, is? Generally it's about 5.5 of a mil, but it's very mm -hmm. much set by ear. Yeah, yeah. Depends on how high the output your pickup is. So the higher the output, the higher the magnetism. Um, the lower the output, the lower the magnetism. Mm. If the pickup comes too close to the string, it might start restricting the string movement because of the magnetic field. Um, yeah. I've seen it on um, straps. But trying to get it more outwards out of it. Yeah. It changes the sound. Yeah. It sounds awful. Yeah. yeah. It's called a but string sag. Yeah. Sound is like colours and flavours, yeah. So if you set the pickup so we have, we got just a measure where we mesh between the pole piece and the string. Yeah, um, we start on that point on a strat. So you set this end of the pickup. You plug the thing in. You see what hole you level you get out, and then you go to your first string, and you set the volume level correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. for yourself, play around with it till you got the sound you actually want, because there's quite a difference in sound whether the pickup drops or comes closer. So do that on one point, yeah? and once you've got that point right, that you're happy with the sound, then do it just by volume. So then you check that the volume of the first string is the same as the volume of the sixth string, then you go to your next pickup and you check the volume from that point to that point, and then from there to there, and then on your, mm -hmm. to your bridge pickup. And then make sure, of course, there'll be some differences, but you make sure that your volume levels, as you go through the selector, are pretty much panned out. And that's what we call panning. So 
you know, whatever you do, you're not suddenly jumping up and down in, in your album. Yeah. But this is something you can't go wrong with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the set of things we talked about, feel free to experiment. The more you understand, the better you, you know, play and you become as well. And if you run into trouble, you can always come here and, and um, we'll help, help you back out of the hole, you know. Mm -hmm. But this is not something you can go far out of, you know. And if you're worried about it, just count how many turns you did on the screw. Then you know, you know, I don't like it so much, I can did it three times, maybe I'll go back three times, mm. go back to my own so, yeah. The worst thing you can do on a scratch plate loaded electric guitar is drop the pickup into the three. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there's really, like, there's no damage that can be done. And it's actually quite interesting, like Nick was saying, um, put your pickup too high, hear what the sag is actually doing, hear what that magnetic field is actually causing on the string, and then put it too low and hear that those differences and then once you kind of know those two extremes you can find a nice happy happy medium there yeah is the bridge genuine generally closer to the strings the bridge pickup it kind of looks like it from here but i'm not sure yeah yeah well pickups and position of pickups it's the same do you have sugar drink tea or not <laughs> and how many sugars yeah so, so if you think about um, being the flight analogy down on the bridge end, there's a lot less movement on that string than on the neck. Right, end. okay, yeah. So generally, they'll be quite a lot closer to be able to pick up enough movement for it to be yeah. tonally clear. And also, sometimes you see in angles, so the higher strings yeah. are, you know, pick up's a bit closer yeah. on the higher end, yeah. a bit lower on the yeah. more yeah. bite it down on the higher end. Mm. Than the That's yeah. the flavour. Mm. So, if we just go back to pick up position, yeah? And there's loads of guitars where this is all doesn't, you know, this is not part of it. But if you go back to the science, 12 fret is your halfway point. Your next halfway point is your neck pickup. The next halfway point is your middle pickup. The next halfway point is your bridge pickup. If you keep yeah. cutting it in half, but in half, in half. half. That is just scientific about where your most harmonic points are. You know, if you play towards the bridge or more on the neck, the sound will change. So there's, you know, this is not a science that that is how you have to stick to. Mm. You know, there's lots of guitars with moving pickups, you know, or angled pickups, you know. So this pickup is angled, a bit more angled to be brighter on that side, you know. Yeah, so if you do lead, mm. you have a bit brighter side there. So that is not a, not a science in itself, but that's a basic starting point from where your most harmonic points are. <coughs> and also, something else was going to say about pickups. Pickups is a technology all by itself, right? Yeah. And a pickup is a fairly simple thing, mm. but. Um, how the coils are stacked, are they nicely stacked, are they scattered, are they high up and narrow, are they wide and shallow, mm. type of magnets, mm. whether they're north or south, um, there's an awful lot to do in, in, in different sounds. Right? What happens if you take your guitar then to Australia? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you have to play left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> There's one other thing with pickups which is quite, is very interesting actually. Um, so there's a physics um, kind of phenomenon called the eddy current. So eddy, I can't remember his second name. Eddy Brown. So yeah, the brass. <laughs> he just he caught me out. <laughs> I don't know his second name, but he was a physicist and he discovered the eddy current. So brass is non-magnetic but it does affect a magnetic field. So if you imagine like a scientific experiment where you have like a bit of wooden board, a bit of brass, and then a bit of wood at an angle, and you drop a magnet down there, the magnet will flow normally, and as soon as it gets over the brass, it will slow right down, 
and then it will carry on again. So it's not magnetic in itself, but it disturbs that magnetic field. And you get pick up base plates, pick up screws, all made out of brass or steel. So if you're using the brass, what you're generating inside the pickup is actually an eddy current and it can make the sound a lot creamier and a lot smoother because it changes that magnetic field altogether.